action as the Michigan Wolverines take on the Indiana Hoosiers. Again, everyone, Larry Adderley along with Jim Branstetter for another Michigan football telecast. And Jim, this emotional game has to be one that the Hoosiers have looked forward to for some time. Absolutely. Got to be about 365 days. Last year, the Wolverines beat Indiana on the last play of the game in Ann Arbor. A 45-yard TD pass to Anthony Carter from John Wangler with no time left on the clock. And it spoiled a great Indiana effort. They had a tie game with Michigan. And they were in the Big Ten race. And all of a sudden, Michigan came up with a touchdown with no time left. The kids were heartbroken, and I gotta believe that today, looking at this game, they've been waiting for 365 days to get at the Wolverines. Well, Wangler and Carter are back, and so is the most valuable player in the Big Ten last year. We talk about the great quarterbacks in the Big Ten, Arch Leister from Ohio State and Mark Herman from Purdue, but the most valuable player in the conference was Tim Clifford from Indiana. He is a guy that can do everything. He runs, passes very well. He's probably Indiana's most valuable player in the sense that he makes things happen for the offense, and they've got an outstanding offense. Defense is the question mark, though. The statistics say you can run on Indiana. Corso expects Michigan to try just that. And we'll find out because they're lined up and ready for the kickoff right now. Michigan won the toss and will receive. Anthony Carter goes deep into the end zone. Stanley Edwards right in front of him. And Don Giesler moves forward to kick off for Indiana. A bouncing ball picked up at the five by Carter. The 20. The 30. Anthony Carter to the 40-yard line before being tripped. Michigan first and 10. First and 10, Michigan. John Wangler. Stanley Edwards and Lawrence Ricks behind him. First down, 42-yard line. Ricks hurdles up to the 50-yard line. Walls makes the tackle. He is at the 50-yard line. Also there, number 83, Steve Rowe. Second down and two for Michigan. Lawrence Ricks, a bit of a surprise starting this game, but apparently that injury is healed, and of course all the tailbacks for Michigan are hurting a little bit. Carter goes in motion on this second down and two play, and it's Lawrence Ricks bouncing in and over for the first down. Craig Walls and Marlon Evans are there to make the tackle for Indiana. Those are their linebackers and the leading tacklers on this team, Evans and Walls, as that must be what their defense tries to do is funnel those runners into the linebackers and let them do the work. Both linebackers very aggressive, both of them uh, very sure tacklers too, Larry, and that's one of the reasons why uh, the Indiana defense has been set up to really uh, make people in the offensive line confuse their blocking assignments and keep them off the linebackers. First down, Stanley Edwards breaks through and runs right through a tackle, fumble, and no, they're calling the ball down at about the 41-yard line, which would be a first down for Michigan, as Edwards ran right through the tackle of Steve Rowe, the defensive end, and the crowd, of course, thinks that ball should go over to Indiana. And there's Getman. He is replacing Tim Wilbur. Wilbur, of course, as a freshman, he intercepted the ball, I think, eight times, and that is a career uh, record at Indiana. He also had a, uh, a career total of 17 interceptions coming into this Michigan game, but Wilbur Hurt on the opening kickoff. Boy, that's a tough break for Indiana as they go into this game defensively hurting a little bit, and now they lose one of their big guns in the defensive secondary. First and 10 again, 10 yards on the run by Stanley Edwards. Langer to throw. Anthony Carter incomplete as he was met by Indiana's number one, Steve Mitchell. Good timing by Mitchell. He got there about the same time Carter and the ball arrived on the spot, and that would have been a very difficult one to hang on to. Yes, it would, and it's amazing. Anthony goes up, doesn't make the reception, is hit very hard, and then watch Mitchell. He goes down, and Anthony stays up. Now, Anthony's 166 pounds. You figure that one out. Mitchell at 185. Second down and 10, Michigan. Ball at the Indiana 36-yard line. Carter to the bottom of your screen. Alan Mitchell split to the top. Wangler gives to Ricks, trying to get back through the middle, but 
Evans is there to make the first hit, and Kenny Ball wraps it up. Gain of about a yard. They try to draw kind of a, you know, a good idea in the sense that they've got second and long. They might expect him to pass, but Indiana smelled it out. The hole developed there early, but then the linebacker moves in there, uh, reacting very well to the play. That's Marlon Evans, 17. He's their leading tackler, reacted very well, smelled out the draw. Michigan forced into a third and long. I take it back. They lost a yard on the play. It is third and 11, so Langler looks to throw, has time, overthrows. His intended receiver, Craig Dunaway. Fourth down and 11. And the Hoosiers are fired up. Not only are the Hoosiers fired up as a football team, but the capacity crowd here at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana, I think has them going a little bit too. And we would be remiss if we didn't mention it is a perfect day. Absolutely beautiful here in Southern Indiana. Don Bracken to punt. Standing at about the 10 yard line is Wilbur for Indiana. So he's apparently survived that bump he got on the opening kickoff. Wilbur signals fair catch, but it bounces at the five straight in the air, and Michigan downs it at the three yard line. That ball did not react the way Wilbur had hoped it would, and Michigan gets Indiana deep in a hole to start their first offensive possession. Well, that's a great kick by Don Bracken, knocking Indiana down deep in their own territory. Thirty-three yards on the punt. As Indiana starts at their own three-yard line, first and ten. Clifford, the quarterback, Bowers, the fullback. Hark Raider is deep, and Hark Raider is met right at the line of scrimmage by Canavino. He maybe got it to the four-yard line. There was a big opening, but Canavino moved right into it. Second down and 10. One of the successes Indiana's offense had against Michigan last year was running that quick hitting play, the slant off tackle. I expect that probably we'll see the same type of offensive strategy here in this, this game. Got to keep it simple this deep in your own territory, however. And they go back with Hart Raider again. And he is met and dropped at the four-yard line. It'll be third down and nine. Number 24, Mike Hart Raider. The other success Indiana had last year was passing to Nate Lundy. And Lundy bruised the collarbone last week against Northwestern and will not play in this game. His two long receptions set up both Indiana touchdowns, and he will be sorely missed. In a shotgun formation on this third down, and he's going to kick it away. End over end kick was just about worked, but caught at the 40 yard line by Jackson, and he gets it back to the 30. Clifford is not their regular putter. Don Geisler is, but Clifford has punted before, and out of that shotgun formation, he can be a very effective weapon. The new Michigan State Boys record. Also this afternoon, Indiana's women's field hockey team is playing Purdue for the state championship at Old Yesterday, the IU Yesterday, the IU First and 10, Michigan. Indiana 30-yard line. Second possession for the Wolverines and great field position. Lawrence Rick, big opening. Busts a couple tacklers and Lawrence Rick scores a Michigan touchdown. A 30-yard run that left two Indiana players sprawled at the 14-yard line. What a great run by Lawrence Rick. First of all, let's give him credit on the fact that he gets a big hole to run through. It is straight down the middle of the field. Uh, they gave him a crease, and Lawrence turned it right upfield north and south. Two guys came in to tackle him on either side, and Rick just ran right through both of them into the end zone. And the Hoosiers... Dart Ramsey is helped over to the sideline. I imagine we'll see him again. We certainly did see Tim Wilbur in a hurry after he was shaken up on the opening kickoff. Ali Haji Sheik for the conversion now. Setting it at the 10-yard line will be Rich Hewlett.
kick is drilled between the goal post and in the first quarter with 11 minutes left to play in Michigan 7, Indiana nothing. The deep man for Indiana, number 40, Al Derrick, and number 42, John Roberts. Sheik to kick off for Michigan. Deep for Indiana. Al Daring and John Rogerman. There, a one-play scoring drive of 30 yards on the run by Lawrence Ricks. Short kickoff to the 15-yard line. Rogerman belled it down at about the 22. And they're saying Michigan has recovered Rogerman's fumble. The Michigan players jumping around and delighted with that turnabout, giving them great field position again. Jeff Cohen appears to be the man, Larry, that recovered the fumble. Uh, a big hit on a short kick. Rogerman came up, fielded it on the run, and as soon as he got the ball, took a step or two and was just drilled. Ball popped loose. Cohen dropped on it. And uh, the Wolverines are in possession. Lee Corso on the sideline. Got to be talking to himself here. In the early going, we haven't even played five minutes of the game yet. Michigan has had the ball in his territory all game long. They got one touchdown on the board already. First down, Indiana 22-yard line. On a break following the fumble by Rogeman. Edwards and Ricks behind Wangler. Ricks, another big opening. Lawrence Ricks down inside the five yard line, and he almost broke that one for a 22 yard touchdown. Mike Pendleton there to make the tackle for Indiana finally, but just around the ankles. Lawrence Ricks is uh, Michigan's leading ground gainer on the year with 563 yards, averaging 6.1 a carry. And it's not bad when you can get a hole that big. Lawrence Ricks is probably going to be averaging about 10 a carry after this one's over if he keeps getting that kind of blocking. Evans is helped from the field. Michigan comes out first and 10, first and goal, rather, at the Indiana three-yard line after that run by Lawrence Ricks, who has been overpowering here in the first five minutes of this contest. Ricks gets it again, breaks outside, touchdown, Michigan. No problem at all getting to the outside after some fine blocking, and Michigan has quickly put 13 points on the board. That is Lawrence Ricks' second touchdown uh, today and his sixth on the year. Uh, the play is blocked at the point of attack. Everybody's coming in, figuring they'll go off tackle. When Rick sees everything close up inside, he just turns it outside and heads for the flag. He had to get around Tim Wilbur, who was supporting real heavy on the run. Wilbur, of course, might be a little bit slower than normal today just because of that knee injury that he suffered on the kickoff. He couldn't react, and Ricks went in easily. Haji Sheik to attempt another conversion. Hewlett will spot it. Ten-yard line. It's down. It's up. It's good. And with not quite five minutes gone in this game, 10.35 left in the first quarter, it's already Michigan 14, Indiana nothing. After an exchange of possessions, we pick up the action later in the quarter. Tim Clifford, outstanding quarterback, but we haven't had much chance to see him freewheeling yet. Although in this series, he ought to be able to. And Clifford to throw on first down. Way over the middle and almost intercepted by Jackson. Tony Jackson may be so surprised that that ball hit him on the numbers that he didn't hang on. Intended for Steve Corso, but way over Corso's head. Looks like both Clifford and Wangler are having trouble trying to figure out, you know, how hard to throw the ball. Maybe there's a little wind that's making it take off on him, but Wangler's overthrown three today, and here on the first pass that Clifford goes down the middle of any distance, he overthrows it badly. Second and ten, Indiana, at the Hoosier 26-yard line. Again, Clifford will throw. Got his man, Weir, over the middle, and Weir... Knocked down by Bostic and Owens, but that's out of the 40-yard line. First down, Indiana. Their first first down of the afternoon. Great pass in that they caught Michigan in a zone, and Weir came across and just found a tiny little crease that was open, and Clifford, who can throw it very, very well, just threaded the needle between linebacker and uh, defensive back. Weir took it on the run and got in the secondary, and Indiana's looking at some good field position, and really got to be getting their heads up now because they got something going. Clifford throws the screen. Complete to Lonnie Johnson, but he only gets three before being driven out of bounds. Gergash and Robert Thompson doing the damage defensively. You know, the flanker comes into this game when it's Steve Corso 
a lot of times. He will bring the play into the huddle and then trot out to his position while Clifford relays the play to the team. It's almost like Army's old lonely end who never went into the huddle and just stood out there and, and knew what to do. On second down, straight ahead, fullback Minio gets maybe two yards to the 45 where it'll be third down and four. Minio and Johnson come out. Park Raider and Bowers are in. The Indiana backfield. A lot of player shuffles on this offense. They have some depth on offense too. The quarterback remains Tim Clifford and I will all afternoon. Over the middle throw, good for Steve Corso. Knocked loose and recovered by Michigan. It is Michigan's ball as Corso had the first down at the Michigan 45, but he was popped loose from the ball. And a Michigan player hurt on the tackle. Canavino getting up slowly, but Canavino seems to be all right, and so is Corso. It's just another turnover for the Hoosiers. I think what happened was Canavino was the guy that got the fumble. I think Robert Thompson was the guy who made the hit. I'm not exactly sure. But whatever it was, Corso made a great catch. He's the kind of guy that will go across the middle and make the catch. But he isn't often going to get hit that hard by Robert Thompson. First and 10, Michigan. Wangler gives to Ricks. Trying to get outside. Had a little room. Penalty flag is down. The outside closed quickly as Marlon Evans, who is over uh, an injury that he suffered early in this game. And Craig Walls, the two linebackers, got there and hauled Ricks down. Gained maybe two yards on the play. But we'll have to see what happens with the penalty. Against Michigan. And the Wolverines will have their first real problem of the afternoon. And it isn't even all that bad, just five yards. Holding is the call against Michigan. The holding call for five yards. I don't know how that could be for only five yards. It must have been some kind of other holding, like the offensive back pushing somebody into somebody else. I'm, I'm not sure, but holding in college football is 15. At any rate, it's first down and 14 for Michigan. And Ricks. Bangs through a good opening, gets some yardage before Chuck Alexander gets in his way. It'll be second down and about six yards to go. Take a look up front. This is where Michigan's been doing it. There's George Lilja, All-American center. Look at the block he gets, and then Powers just waits. It's kind of a delay draw. Both of them get good blocks. The hole opens up, and uh, Ricks runs through it beautifully, as that's the kind of play that's been successful all day. That one good for about 10. They need six for a first down. The ball is at the Michigan 47-yard line. 14-0. Michigan leads Indiana in the first quarter. Ricks has got it very close to a first down. Tim Wilbur is up there to make the tackle, along with Steve Rowe. And right on the very bottom of the pile is Craig Walls again. Junior linebacker number 60. Ricks has had some trouble with the ankle there. It looks like the ankle has given him no trouble at all today. The last couple of games we've seen, he's been a little bit gimpy. He hasn't been able to really leg it out and stretch it out and get going and turn it upfield. But, boy, today he looks good. Third down and one. Certainly looks good on that touchdown run. 30 yards, he broke right through the Indiana secondary and left two backs in a heap at the 15-yard line. And Nate breaks through again. Ricks has the first down and is into the Indiana 34-yard line. Denver Smith, the middle guard, coming back to make the tackle along with Steve Mitchell. Look at the Michigan offensive line. Now, they're rushing eight people. Now, they just stalemate him at the line. And there's the block by Becker. He just sustains it long enough, and then Ricks will break it. He breaks the tackle of the line of scrimmage, and he's got uh, Denver Smith over there to beat. I was going to call him Dallas Smith, and I knew it was a city with his first name. Wangler to throw on first down. Anthony Carter, touchdown Michigan. Wide open as Wangler nails Anthony Carter on a 34-yard touchdown pass, and the little man 
is off to another record. Well, he has just tied Michigan's all-time career touchdown record held by Dick Riffenberg. He is tied now with 16. It is a post pattern down the middle. Anthony beats the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Mitchell, forget it, touchdown. One-on-one -on -one coverage aptly described as Anthony's number one and Steve Mitchell of Indiana is number one. But that was easy, and Steve Corso frustrated knowing that he had to do something to cover up little Anthony Carter, which no one has been able to do very effectively this year. Haji Sheik converts the extra point, and with a minute 18 left in the first quarter, it's Michigan 21, Indiana nothing. Well, if that doesn't deflate the Hoosiers, I don't know what will. Three quick touchdowns, and the emotion must be drained on the far side of the field where Indiana looked forward to this game as revenge, and they now look forward to making up a 21-point deficit. Sheik's kickoff. Daring and Rogerman are the deep backs at the 10-yard line. It's Rogerman. He hangs on this time, but it's only out to about the 17-yard line where Indiana starts an offensive series again inside their own 20. I got to believe the people here at Hoosier Land have got to be stunned at this point. They really expected their Hoosiers to come out today and pull the upset. I honestly believe it because of what happened last year. The emotions running high and now they're down 21 to nothing and they've not had the ball anywhere near Michigan territory yet. First and 10 Clifford Bowers and Harkrader and Harkrader went back to the opening and tripped over Bowers as he was knocked off his feet. Short gain on that one couple of yards second down and eight. You know, the story about Harkrader continues to be amazing. You know, when he was a freshman in Indiana, he was their fourth string tailback. Injuries knocked down their first three. He came in as a starter and rushed for over 1,000 yards. Now, if that isn't a rags to riches, I don't know what is. I watched him. He was an exciting runner. The knee injury slowed him down some. On second and eight, Clifford has to put it up. Kurgovac hauls him down at the 10-yard line. Mike Kurgovac breaking through the Indiana protection and Clifford never had a chance to turn and look upfield. Mike Turgovac starting his 26th straight game as a Michigan defensive lineman. He just beats the block of number 65. They've got a rolling pocket is what it is. And he just beats the block and he shows his great quickness in catching Wilbur or uh, Clifford. There's nothing a quarterback can do. He's not in any position to throw rolling that way. And Turgovac, with his quickness, just caught him. That's the end of the first quarter with the Indiana trying to figure out what to do about this game. Michigan leading the Hoosiers 21 to nothing. Third down and 16 for Indiana. They go into the shotgun again, and remember, Clifford may punt out of this, but he doesn't want to this time. Rolling. Gets away from some Michigan tacklers. Clifford on the loose. 35, 40 yard line before he's brought down. Tim Clifford showing you why he is the most valuable player in not only Indiana, but the Big Ten last year. Well, they had it. Michigan defensively played it very well. Watch him. They keep him inside. Great play by Thompson on the other side. But then Clifford turns it upfield inside where they're supposed to have pursuit, and they just he runs away from people. Actually, they played it well at the line of scrimmage, but it was coming back up to support uh, that hurt him. A 30-yard gain on third down out of a scramble by Tim Clifford. First and 10, Indiana at their own 40. Clifford to throw, and he will launch his one. Overthrown. Intended for John Boyd and well downfield. Boyd was pretty well covered. That ball was thrown a mile, but incomplete. Second down and 10. Just a straight fly pattern, hopefully trying to catch Michigan napping a little bit on the corner, not thinking that they'd go deep, much like Michigan did with Anthony Carter throwing that uh, sweet pass that he did. Just try to catch him in a little bit of a nap. They didn't. Keith Bostic, very good coverage. Second and 10. Behind Clifford, it's Bowers and Lonnie Johnson. Boyd is split to the top of your screen. Corso to the bottom of your screen. 
as Clifford throws one over the middle. Canavino helps break that one up, intended for John Boyd, the flanker. Good pass, good route. Just that Andy Canavino was there, collided with the receiver, and batted that ball away. I'll tell you what, Larry, I got to believe the Indiana receiver is going to be thinking a little bit twice now about going in the middle. Two times they've been in the middle, once with Boyd, once with Corso, and both times the receiver has been jolted rather severely by a tackler. Third down and 10, you'd have to think throw on this one, too. In fact, I'm surprised they haven't gone to the shotgun formation, which worked the last time around. Clifford just drops straight back, gets protection, throws sideline, intercepted but out of bounds, no catch, although great coverage by Marion Body. Corso was the intended receiver, but Marion Body stayed between him and the ball at all times and then picked it off, just landed out of bounds. Don Geisler in the punt. Anthony Carter goes deep for Michigan. Geisler will kick it away from about the 30-yard line of Indiana. Second quarter, 21 to nothing, Michigan in front. That's Evan Cooper. He is the short back in Michigan's formation. Geisler fields a low snap. Kicks a low end over end kick that Anthony Carter has at the 21 yard line. Spins up to about the 32 or three yard line before he's dropped. Michigan again starting out in excellent field position. Anthony Carter, who gives Michigan so many threats offensively as a pass receiver, as a punt kickoff return man, and sometimes just his presence on the field, which forces the defense to cover him and makes it easier for someone else to get away with something. First and ten. Puts Wolfolk the tailback, replacing Ricks, and Wolfolk picks his way through a couple of uh, Hoosiers before he's grabbed and thrown down at the 40-yard line. Long run for only a two-yard gain as Jimmy Hunter wrestles Wolfolk to the ground. I think Butch had about eight or ten had he turned it upfield. He had real good blocking. He had some open room, and then he just decided to turn it to the sideline. He was looking for 60. Yeah. And uh, what happened was he turned an eight-yard gain into a two-yard gain. I can get to the sideline. I can go all the way on this one. Second down and eight. 40-yard line. Carter in motion and then back in motion. Inside handoff to Stanley Edwards, and he gets maybe four. Ingram, rather. Ingram is the fullback. This is that trap play that has been very successful in the past, but... Indiana, you see, with Walls in there, reads it well. In a little misdirection, but he reacts well back to the ball and gets Ingram before he gets too much. Third down and four. Schembecker looks on. Probably comfortable at this point, although maybe not. Coaches never do get too comfortable. Again, Carter goes in motion. This time it's Wolfolk on the handoff. Outside, upfield, and running over Wilbur to the Indiana 45. It'll be first down for Michigan. Misdirection once again, and this is one of the things I think Michigan is really very successful at. Try to negate the fact that the other teams are really trying to flow very quickly to the ball. Penalty on the play, holding against Michigan, and that'll nullify a good gain in a first down. Yep, there goes my first down. Good play, same formation as before. First time they give it to the fullback, second time they give it to the tailback. It works each time, but the penalty drives them back to the 29-yard line. Now there's 15 yards for holding. Same signal they gave before, wasn't it? I think the other signal was pushing. I think you're right on that. I thought holding, too. Anthony Carter gets a new jersey. They want him to have breakaway jerseys yeah. because at 160 pounds, and the way he runs, sometimes all they get is a piece of that number one jersey. You also see a little bit of a corset. That's kind of like a flak jacket on Anthony. Uh, it's not he, a cosmetic. Really. No, no. He goes across the middle and catches a lot of footballs, and he can take some pretty good blows on those ribs. Third down and long. Wangler being chased out of the pocket just barely gets a pass away before Kumaro brings him to the turf. Play not very, not blocked very well at the line of scrimmage. Wangler looking, he really has to break out of the pocket before he's ready to throw. The receiver comes open, but Kumro's on him right now. 
John tries to get it out, but Kumro gets a hand on the arm, forces the bad throw. On fourth down and long, about 18 yards. Don Bracken in the punt. And Wilbur deep to receive for Indiana. Great punt by Bracken, well over Wilbur's head. Hits at the 10-yard line and goes right to the end zone. An amazing kick of 61 yards. Am I right on that, or is that 71 yards? From the 29, that is 71, 71 yards. Yard. That looked like it was shot out of a cannon. Who did he hit that? Let's pick up the action later in the quarter with Indiana in possession. Second down and nine. Really, it's an eight and a half. Clifford got his man, Stevenson, the tight end. Bostic also has him and throws him down at the 32. But that'll be third down and very short yardage. Half a yard. Caught Michigan in a blitz. And Stevenson came open because there was one-on-one -on -one coverage. And the idea of the blitz is to get to that quarterback because it's awful tough if you give him time to cover people one-on-one -on -one for any length of time. Five minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the first half. A 21 to nothing ball game in favor of Michigan. Third and one, and they go to the tailback, Hark Raider, and he got the first down easily to the Michigan 25 before he ran into number 37, Tony Jackson. This is a short yardage play. There's nothing real special about it. Just straight ahead blocking at the line of scrimmage. Hark Raider gets the ball, sees a little hole, and jumps over it. And then he's into the secondary. That's all he wanted to do, carrying the ball with both hands, making sure not to fumble. Good first down play. 26-yard line, first down, Indiana. Their deepest penetration so far. A touchdown before the half. They really need it if they're going to come out of this second half and get back in the ball game. Lonnie Johnson. Cross buck as he faked to the fullback on one side. Gave to Johnson on the other side, and he got it inside the 25, down to the 22. Well, I think we're seeing a little bit of the absence of Turgovac maybe here today because they were not running as well against Michigan when Turgovac was playing that one tackle position. He is kind of the leader of that interior defensive line and uh, without Turgovac in there they lose some proficiency at it. Park Raider, Bowers and in addition in the backfield is a blocker and they run the option. Park Raider gets the pitch but body forced him out of bounds at the 25. 24-yard line. Michigan had that. Michigan had that defense just beautifully. Watch. Clifford comes down the line of scrimmage, and Canavino is right there to say hi. Right there is Canavino. He forces the pitch. Body beats the block and is on the pitch man. Now you got. You've got to get the linebacker blocked, which gives the quarterback the option. He can turn it up and run, or he can pitch it. That time he was taken. He had to pitch it, but the pitch man was taken. That's the way you defense the option. Third down and nine. Tough call for Clifford. Big play for Indiana. A throw over the middle. Got his man. Where intercepted. Brian Carpenter. Great interception by Brian Carpenter inside the five-yard line. Where was open for just a moment. Clifford thought he had him. Let go of the ball. And instead, Carpenter stepped in to make the big interception and shut down the Hoosier drive. Well, you know, you just can't playing much better defense than that, Larry. They ran a post over the middle. There was one deep coverage. Carpenter running step for step. It had to be a perfect, perfect pass for it to be complete. And it was not perfect, a little bit behind. And there was Brian Carpenter there to make the interception. They had deep coverage behind the post and uh, short coverage by Carpenter in front of him. And really, I don't think Clifford should have thrown the ball in there. He wanted the touchdown, went the whole distance for it, and didn't get it. Instead, Michigan takes over, first and ten at their two. Ingram and Wolfolk on the back, and that's too much time. They're going to take over, first, first and ten, ten and a half, two, or eleven at the one-yard line. Delay of game. Not the kind of mistake you want at this point. You got every you need every inch you can get. One-yard penalty against Michigan. Delay of game. Four and a half minutes remain in the half. Michigan has that 21-point lead, but it was in danger for a moment until uh, the interception by Carpenter, the junior from Flint Southwestern. Yeah. 
Ingram finding a very little room. He maybe got two-yard line. He got the penalty yard back. Flint Southwestern. Michigan's uh, picked a good athlete or two from Flint Southwestern. One that comes immediately to mind, number seven a few years ago, Rick Leach. And didn't they pick a tight end from there, Gene Johnson, <laughs> who wasn't bad? No, he was a four-year starter. Mm. About harvest at that school. Butch Wolfolk straight ahead. Runs headlong into Kevin Kenley. But Butch wins the struggle and gets it out over the five-yard line. There was some strength and determination on the part of Wolfolk. You know, we talk so much about Butch being very, very fast. He does have world-class sprinter speed, but... In that instance, we see the power. He was hit about the three and carried a guy straight up to about the six. Here you see the block by big, strong tackle Ed Moransky. Now that's what you call uh, standing the guy up and knocking him back off the ball. Third down and four. Ball at the six-yard line. Michigan six-yard line. Wangler gonna throw it out of there. Got his man, Wolfolk, and he turns it up over the 15-yard line. That should be first down before Craig Walls makes the tackle. We have seen that play before from deep in Michigan territory where Wanger has the confidence to come out of that backfield, find a back, a short receiver, and get away with the first down. Back runs right into the flat. They're coming with a blitz with Wilbur, number eight. You see him trailing the play. Wilbur came on the blitz, and if he comes, Butch runs inside him and just gets out in the flat, and Wangler just drops it to him. That's a well-designed play and a good call in that situation. First down, 17-yard line. Wilfolk to the sideline. He's got it, 30-yard line. Almost broke it as Wilfolk just getting near the Indiana sideline before Pendleton can bring him down. There's another first down. Butch impressed me last week in the Illinois game when he was racked up. The offensive line was stopped at the goal line in their charge. He was caught at the goal line, but just with the upper body strength, he forced his way into the end zone. I mean, he's impressed me before with some of the things he's done, but that now, one particular. Couple that strength with that speed, and you got yourself a great running back. First and 10 at the Michigan 33-yard line. Getting it out from their own one. This drive using up two minutes so far. Stanley Edwards, nowhere to go on that one. Boy, Edwards met by Kenley and uh, Jimmy Hunter. But the primary tackler was Kevin Kenley, a junior linebacker, number 39. Boy, had he really stopped Edwards cold in his tracks. Take a look at it. Tailback, Stanley normally playing fullback, moved to tailback, and there you see Kenley. Oh, he has met, and also Tim Wilbur in there helping out. A holding penalty will drive Michigan back again, and so much for this offensive drive that started at the two-yard line, backed up to the one, worked its way out to the 33. 2-12 left in the half. Anthony Carter comes in. There you see the score. Michigan putting those touches on the board thanks to a 30-yard blast by Lawrence Ricks. An end sweep, short yardage by Ricks, and a 34-yard touchdown pass to Anthony Carter. No running room at all as they tried to hand off and get outside. Lawrence Ricks back in there, but linebacker Craig Walls and Rod Walden were all over Lawrence Ricks. Michigan going the wrong way. Just Came back with a draw, Larry. Kind of a good call. First and long. They come with a draw, but there's just way too much penetration by Rod Walden, number 76. You've got to hold those guys on the line of scrimmage, and they did not hold Walden on the line of scrimmage at all. He got into the backfield and was looking for people. The clock a friend to Michigan right now on second down and a ton. Wofo. Looks for room, and there isn't very much. Knocked down by Kenley and Jeff Gedman. Minute six left in the half. Indiana calls a timeout because they want to get that one more position, forcing Michigan into a punt situation.
Third down and 23 at the Michigan 20-yard line. Wolfolk, a workhorse, here in the second quarter. Not a whole lot to show for it, 39 yards. Pitch to Anthony Carter as they try to sweep left. Anthony cuts it back. <laughs> Good move. Just left the linebacker walls in his tracks, but there were too many red jerseys, and Anthony is hauled down just short of the 30-yard line. Well, they ran a pass off this play earlier in the game. Uh, maybe they're trying to catch Indiana. The same situation. Bring Anthony, and this time it's a run all the way. Anthony breaks it back up inside. Watch these moves. Well, he left Walls standing there, grabbing at air, and it took three guys to just kind of say corral him and knock Anthony down. Boy, he's elusive. 29-yard line, but still it is fourth down and 14 yards to go for a first down. Michigan has to punt it away, and Indiana will get about 45 seconds to work with before the half ends. Last time Michigan was on their 29 and were forced to punt, Bracken got off a 71-yard rocket. And Indiana won't be able to be patient, however. They'll have to, in the last 45 seconds, just put up some long bombs. And, of course, Michigan and everyone in the stadium is well aware of that. Wilbur is deep. Rogeman, medium deep. Bracken's punt from about the 20. Off the side of the foot, not a very good punt. Rolling 30-yard line. Takes a Michigan bounce, however, and is covered well as it goes out of bounds. 22-yard line of Indiana. That punt turned out just fine. Indiana without a timeout left, but they can control the clock by the, using the sideline and, and the pass. 49-yard kick with the roll, Larry. Not bad for off the side of your foot, I guess. No, no, not bad at all. Got a little help from the wind. 43 seconds. That's the situation for the Hoosiers. First down, 22-yard line. They trail 21 to nothing. But they have held Michigan in the second quarter. Clifford overthrows Stevenson, who was behind the linebackers, and that's probably why the overthrow. Clifford knew he had to get it over the reach of Canavino and those people, and that was just out of the reach of Stevenson. Might have been a little gun shy, too, from the last pass he threw into a crowd, which was intercepted by Brian Carpenter. And Michigan did have good coverage on Stevenson. And really, that's a tough, finesse pass to throw. Clifford just put it up there a little bit too hard over through. Second and 10. Still 22-yard line. You got to look for four straight passes on this series. And instead, they hand it to Lonnie Johnson. Shows you what I know. And he breaks it out before Bostic can bring him down. There's a gain of 10. So the first down will at least stop the clock temporarily. 33 seconds left in the half. Now the clock rolling again. Indiana patient with a good drive that got there until the interception. Can't afford to be patient now. 24 seconds left in the half. They have a first down. Clifford deep throws the sideline. Intercepted by Mel Owens. He's looking for some blocking. It's not there and Owens is dropped at the Indiana 40 yard line by Dave Weir. Mel Owens just in the right place at the right time, and Clifford threw the ball a little bit short. I got to be wondering what pass was being run on that play because Clifford threw it right to Owens. There it is. It looks like an out cut. It's over one guy and underneath another guy, but that's so far underneath the other guy, the deep receiver, which was Corso. Uh, it looked like he threw it right in between him. Owens makes the reception on the interception and puts it at Michigan 39. Lee Corso's got to be talking to himself right now, wondering what is happening to Tim Clifford. Michigan uses up a timeout to stop the clock with 12 seconds to go. They want to try for at least a field goal before the half. First and 10, 39-yard line of Indiana. 
Wangler throws for Carter in and out of his hands at the 15 yard line and a hit really delivered on Carter by Chuck Alexander. But Anthony bounces up and goes to the huddle. Seven seconds now left in the half. Also, Anthony usually catches those. Timeout again called by Michigan as they want to preserve that time and see if they can put more points up on the board. Second down and 10 for Michigan. They have time for two plays if they hurry on this one. Wangler deep for Carter. In the end zone, intercepted. Intercepted by Chuck Alexander. And the clock ran out anyway, so nothing comes of it other than a change of position. Indiana finishes the half in the same position they were in at the end of the first quarter. Down 21 to nothing. It's Parents Day here in Indiana, and the mothers and fathers of some of the uh, senior players and some of the cheerleaders and all introduced here at halftime, and that's a kind of a nice touch. The crowd enjoying that, but not enjoying what Michigan has done to this Indiana team, taking a 21 to nothing lead and leading in the statistics, as you might imagine also. Well, I think the key statistic is the fact that uh, Indiana has lost two fumbles and thrown two interceptions. That's four turnovers. Two of those turnovers have turned into points. Uh, and Michigan leads 21 nothing. Now in the second quarter they played Michigan even. It was a nothing nothing game. But those turnovers hurt them early, and it cost them 21 points. And uh, really, you just can't afford to do that against a good team like Michigan and expect to win. Now you got to play catch up. You could say it cost them 28 points because the long drive they had that should have resulted in a touchdown or could have resulted in points. Instead, the interception by Carpenter at the two yard line, and Indiana showed a great deal of patience in that drive. And it's difficult to be patient when you when you need 21 points plus. The only thing I see positive in the fact that Indiana. Indiana does have the ability offensively to come back in a game like this. So I don't think they're out of it. I think 21 points is not an insurmountable lead. A turnover by Michigan, this or that, they could be right back in it. So by no means is this game over. Indiana to receive as we open the second half. Haji Sheik teeing the ball up and deep to receive. Al Daring and John Rogerman for the Hoosiers. Rogeman's fumble costly in the first half and Sheik drives Rogeman into the end zone and Indiana will not attempt to return it. First and 10 at the Hoosier 20 yard line. Offensively Jim it appears Michigan has some changes in mind at the sideline. It's hard to figure but uh, you know we'll have to wait and see what happens when Michigan gets the ball but Rich Hewlett is warming up. As we take a look at Indiana's offense as they get ready for the second half. Now, if Hewlett comes in there, I expect we'll see a lot more ball control by Michigan. It's Lonnie Johnson and not Hark Raider at the tailback, and Johnson spins out to the 29-yard line. Mel Owens gets him by the jersey, and that's all. Gain of nine on the play, second down and one. Lonnie Johnson had a 211-yard day this year as we take a look at Michigan defensively. Mike Turgovac, number 77, is not in there on the defensive line. So it's Winford Caraway in his spot. Lonnie Johnson takes the pitch and runs headlong into Canavino, but it's a first down Indiana as Johnson carries it out to the 33-yard line. The Hoosier offense starting with a rush. Lonnie Johnson, senior from Akron, Ohio, six foot, 205 pounds. And on two carries, he gets 13 yards total. As I was talking about, he had a 211 yard day, averaging over five yards a carry this year. Corso is the wing back split to the bottom of your screen. Johnson to pass, short side of the field. He ran out of bounds. He ran out at the 26 yard line. They're marking it. Did not intend to do that, but uh, when he stopped and set to throw, that foot went out of bounds. Well, it was pretty clear it was going to be a pass as soon as he handed off because he never did look once like he was going to turn it up. Just ran right to the sideline. There was very little deception in that play. Loss of seven is what there was. Second down and 17. Not good field position for Clifford to throw, but that's what he has to do. Being chased, 
gets it away and complete. Fullback Minio makes the reception and goes out of bounds, 32-yard line. But that's still short of the uh, of where the series started. Third down, ten and a half. I think Indiana, looking at Minnesota film, saw that there were a fullback in the flat was very successful. Clifford runs it out there, and uh, Minio just takes a quick little shot into the flat, runs down behind the linebacker. Clifford delivers the ball. That's good for eight yards, but when you're looking at a second down and 28, gets you back to about third down and 10. Third and well, 10 and a half. It's just a little bit away from where the series started. Clifford. Throwing incomplete intercepted. Bostic. It was overthrown and Bostic was there and made the easy interception at the Michigan 47 yard line. Tim Clifford not having a good day at all, Larry. That pass really just poorly thrown there. I don't think there's any question about it. The Stevenson jumping for it like a rebounder and he had no chance. And Stevenson Bostic just came, picked it off. Right. Stevenson came open. Bostic's playing center field. And he just, you know, waits for the ball. He was going to make the tackle if uh, Stevenson catches it. He saw the ball overthrown, just waited for it, and made the reception. Wangler is the quarterback. Ricks the tailback, and he gets a couple of yards before being tackled by Craig Walls around the ankles. Others grabbed him a little higher, but Walls, the man who brought Ricks down. So Hewlett warmed up, but that just may have been part of his ordinary pattern at halftime. John Wangler comes right back out as the quarterback. At the 50-yard line, a gain of two, second down and eight for Michigan. They lead 21 to nothing. Stanley Edwards, the fullback. Wangler throws. He's got Anthony Carter loose in the backfield. Wilbur brings him down, but it's inside the 30. First down, Michigan, at the Indiana 27. Anthony gets in the zone, and Wangler delivers the ball very well. Now, if Clifford were throwing this ball, he might have had it intercepted by the linebacker, but you see Anthony comes open underneath the deep man and over the top of the linebackers. Wangler delivered the ball very well. Wilbur on the stop. On a first down carry, Rick spins inside the 25-yard line and forces a pile of Indiana tacklers down to about the 22. A host of people there, Craig Kumaro at the bottom, and of course, Craig Walls, who has been everywhere. I'm impressed with Walls, the linebacker. He is an outstanding defensive player. Second down and five for Michigan. Both receivers split to the top of your screen to the wide side of the field. And a little motion. Bubba Paris jumped, and so did Brent Tisdale of Indiana. Question is, which one went first? And I think it's Bubba Paris. Talking it over with the Indiana team, Michigan backs up their huddle. So they'll go back to about a second down and 10 depending on what Indiana decides to do with their options here. Illegal procedure, Michigan. Illegal procedure, Indiana. The question, the discussion was between officials and the crowd of 53,000 here in Bloomington, Indiana, does not like what happened. Now how do you figure that? Must have been defensively on the other side of the line of scrimmage. The flag was thrown because the guy encroached. And on the other side, Bubba Paris jumped off, so it offset. Still second down and five, right where we were a moment ago. And the give is to Ricks. Behind good blocking, Ricks gets down to about the 16. Pull back Stanley Edwards. Good block to enable Ricks to get the yardage necessary for a Michigan first down. Ricks leading the team in rushing this year. Coming into the game, 563 yards. Averaging 6.1 a carry. And that is not bad. And that's only seeing half duty because he's alternating with Butch Wolfo. First down, Edwards inside. Got the opening. Stanley Edwards cuts down Michigan. A 16 yard burst through the middle by Stanley Edwards. And that looks like what Ricks did earlier from 30 yards out. Same play that they were very successful with against Illinois. Last week against the Illini, Stanley had a career-high 152 yards. It's a trap. 
Watch Becker get the block. There's the block by Powers. That opens the big hole, and the, the safety 25 comes up, tries to make the stop, and, the, and it's all over. Stanley's into the secondary and gone. Ed Moransky moved over and threw a strong block on the linebacker, too, eliminating him, making that about the easiest 16 yards that Stanley will have to run. Haji Sheep attempts the conversion. He kicks it right over the small stands in the end zone. It's good. Michigan widens its lead over Indiana, 28 to nothing. After an exchange of punts, we pick up the action later in the quarter. Wangler, Edwards, and Ricks in the eye. Indiana jumping. Ricks gets the handoff. Number 46, Picks his way through to the 14-yard line. There's a gain of six, second down and four. These kind of running plays with a clock running, just what Michigan would like to happen. Five yard gain to the first Second down, five. On second down, Wangler looks over the Hoosier defense. Gives to Edwards inside. He is met by Kenley. Stopped at the 15 yard line. That's a gain of only a yard. They will have a third and three. Kevin Kenley from Columbus, Ohio, one that got away from the Buckeyes. A full house for Parents' Day, Memorial Stadium, Bloomington, Indiana, and a lot of red. This crowd really dresses up for the Hoosiers. Lawrence Ricks slips outside, slides between a couple tacklers over the 20-yard line. That'll be a first down. Dennis Edwards is one of the two tacklers for Indiana, but he got there too late. Well, Larry, when you see Lawrence Ricks run, it just you know that Schembechler has been talking to him and coaching him because both hands are on the football down deep. He is running to keep his hands in the football, not to drop it and get the necessary yardage for the first down. Nothing more. He's not looking for 60. He's looking for the three that it takes to get the first down and hold on to the ball. At the Michigan 22, it's first down. Again, it's Rick. Same play. Not much opening this time. He gets to the 25. That's a gain of two. Two and a half. Terry Tallon, linebacker, there to make the tackle. And John Powers gets up rather slow and is going back into the huddle with some pain. So is Lawrence Ricks. There you see another big day for him. 128 yards and 22 carries. He comes out. Uh, he has had a little ouchy ankle, but Butch Wolfolk will come in there and they don't lose a thing. Second down and eight. Wolfolk gets the pitch, tries the right side, bounces off a couple tacklers and gets it up near the 35 yard line. Mike Pendleton finally got Wolfolk to stop. But boy, he was hit well back in that run and should have been stopped and just wouldn't quit. Well, there's the power you were talking about earlier, the thing that's impressive. He's got real good upper body strength to go along with that blazing speed. He's a tough one. First down, 34-yard line of Michigan. Nine yards on the run by Butch Wofo. Edwards bounces off a tackler and gets a couple more yards. Kenny Ball was the man he bounced away from. Ball stayed with it. And slipped down to his ankles, but that's two yards. It'll be second and eight again. And there's less than a minute to play in the third quarter. Michigan running the clock down effectively and running downfield. Starting from inside their own 10 is going to drive bow legs, grind it out, go the long way, use up a lot of time. Not a coach in the world wouldn't like a drive like this one. But Wolfolk with a good move breaks into the secondary before. Mitchell can get over there and bring him down with Chuck Alexander, but that's an easy first down on the first into Indiana territory at the 44. Butch is 11th on Michigan's all-time rushing. On the first into Indiana territory at the 44. Butch is 11th on Michigan's all-time rushing list coming into the game with over 1,800 yards. He is adding to that. I'm sure he'll have 1,900 and move up that list. Good call, second down long, draw play, it opened up, Butch got good yardage. Should be last play of the third quarter on a first down from the Indiana 44. Wolfolk hit, fights his way forward for a couple of yards. Again, he was hit in the backfield by Ken Ball, 
and fought it off and made a gain out of it. It'll be second down and eight when the fourth quarter starts because the third quarter has just ended with Michigan leading Indiana 28 to nothing. Fifteen minutes to play in this game. Michigan on top of Indiana and moving on a drive that started at their own eight-yard line. It is now at the Indiana 41. Second down and eight. And Wangler will take to the air. Throwing long for Mitchell. In a crowd, intercepted. Steve Mitchell takes it away from Allen Mitchell. And the Hoosiers come up with a turnover and stop the Michigan drive. Ball was underthrown. Mitchell's shaking up a bit. Ball was underthrown by Wangler. John, as we said at the beginning uh, of the day, really not having a good day passing. But you'll watch. John goes up, tries to throw it as far as he can, but underthrows Allen Mitchell. And here comes free safety Steve Mitchell in a crowd, makes the catch. 18-yard line, first and 10, Indiana. Clifford. Bowers and Lonnie Johnson in the backfield and Clifford just looking to throw. He's only got 15 minutes, so a long bomb is overthrown. Carpenter's second interception of the day. Dave Weir was the intended receiver, but the ball was at least a couple of yards beyond Weir, and Carpenter picks it off. It'll be Michigan first and 10 at its own 34-yard line. Now how to figure that? You know, they go for the long bomb right after the uh, turnover by Michigan. Uh, Wilbur or Clifford rather goes back throws it as far as he can Michigan has got it well covered and uh, Carpenter just kind of goes back makes a catch like a punt reception that's his fourth interception of the year he intercepted one earlier today on the goal line boy I tell you Tim Clifford I don't think he's going to have another day as poor as this one for a long time a pair of turnovers and Michigan is back in charge Wangler pitching to Carter, sweeping the left side, and Carter tripped up by Mike Pendleton. Now, that's not a bad way to bring down Anthony Carter. So hard to tackle, you simply dive in front of him, hope he trips over you. <laughs> so much for the running play. Absolutely. Uh, you know, that's the first time we've seen it uh, this year. It's a play where Anthony comes in motion and then bellies back behind the linebacker, behind the tailback, just pitch it out to him. Picks up two yards on the play. Thanks, Larry. Second down and eight. Carter not in this lineup, and Wilfolk gets an opening in the middle to the sideline. Wilfolk in a foot race, and there he goes. Beat the last man. Butch Wilfolk is going the distance. Larry, that's what three yards for a touchdown for Butch Wilfolk. That's what speed will do for you, really. He makes a great cut following. Uh, he gets through the hole, and it's a trap play. Guard comes around. John powers up through the hole. But then he makes a great cut about 10 yards deep, breaks it to the sideline like we talked about before. He said, I want 60. We said, that's not real good, Butch. Here he does it, and he gets it. Watch Powers up through the hole, gets the block. Now Butch makes a cut right there. Now with a sprinter speed, he runs a 9-1 in the 100. He's on a Big Ten Sprint Champion team for Michigan in the track. Well, he just outruns everybody else. IG Sheet gets a low kick, but it sails between the uprights. It's good, and Michigan leads Indiana 35 to nothing. Earlier in this game, Jim, I talked about being here in 76 when an Indiana team thought about an upset. It rained, it was a miserable day, and Michigan ground out a 35 to nothing victory. Got it up there on the scoreboard again. Haji Sheik kicks a line drive that bounces off Gedman and is covered finally at the 26-yard line by Indiana. That's, that may be the best attack they can have because they've started inside the 20 up until this point. Uh, you know, Butch Wolfolk, who just ran the 63-yard touchdown, averages running per game 73 yards, so he got 63 of it on one play. He's over his average. Rex is over his average. That is why I think that statistic is frequently deceptive when a back has one of those 150 200 yard days it takes one great long run and he's a hundred yard rusher but that doesn't mean he's had a great afternoon I think the real true key is the average per carry first down pass is complete and the Hoosiers get a uh, 
flat in a hurry as Hark Raider takes it out over the 40-yard line. Little screen pass. There's Mike Turgovac out of uniform. We saw his ankle wrapped in ice earlier, and he was very unhappy about that. Slammed the bench in anger. Mike was having a good game in the first half, but we'll have to sit out a while now until that ankle heals. First and 10, Indiana. They've got it out at the 39-yard line. Little screen pass to Hark Raider. Look for more of those in the closing 13 minutes of this game. Weir in motion through the backfield. Pitch to Lonnie Johnson. Good run by Johnson out to the 50-yard line. Boy, he banged through some people. Marion Body finally made the tackle on him. And that should be a first down. It is. Hoosiers with a first down at midfield. Lonnie Johnson, a high school player of the year in the Akron area, rushed for over 1,000 yards in his senior year. And they don't play but about eight or nine games. Now, 1,000 yards in a season, that's not too bad. I no. Mean, a 100-yard game is one thing, but you get 1,000 in eight or nine games, and you've done it. Takes a lot of long runs to get that. Oh, they collide in the backfield. Bowers and Bowers being chased and run down for a loss. Clifford and Bowers made a mistake, and a gambling Michigan defense got to him. Bostick and Herman just forced Bowers parallel across the field and dropped him back at the 45. Well, when it rains, it pours. Indiana offensively is really a pretty good football team, and today they just haven't been able to do anything right. Credit Michigan's defense for causing them some problems, true, but Indiana offensively just is not playing well. Second down and 15 for the Hoosiers. We're in motion again, this time to the wide side of the field. Clifford rolling. He got his man, Corso, knocked loose and recovered by Marion Body. Again, Steve Corso makes an excellent catch, but Evan Cooper drilled him, and when he came down, he lost the ball. Uh, Corso, as you mentioned, is the coach's son. He played his way to a starting lineup. He, he isn't there just because of nepotism. He makes a great catch here, but is just hit up and down and coughs the football up. Body gets on it. First and 10, Michigan, as they grab another Hoosier turnover at the 38-yard line of Michigan. His quarterback is Steve Smith, and he hands off to fullback Stanley Edwards. Craig Walls makes the tackle. Steve Smith getting some more work. And this is a tough situation. You want Steve Smith, the freshman quarterback that we have talked about in other games, to learn to throw against pass coverages and to learn as much as he can. And in a game like this where it's out of control, it's kind of tough when he throws the ball. Second down and five. Other teams might think you're pouring it on, but you're really just giving the young man experience give is to the tailback this time and he bangs ahead for about four yards Kenny Ball gets on his back and Craig Walls is there Butch Wolfolk gonna take a little punishment now as the Hoosiers just will dish out some solid hits knowing that this game with 11 and a half minutes to play is all over 35 to nothing favor Michigan I think the important thing about Steve Smith and what they want to get is some experience in reading defenses for the pass. I think that's the critical thing for a young quarterback and the most important thing that he has to learn. And in a situation like this, as you mentioned, Larry, if they do throw, you know, they get, uh, you know, accused of pouring it on. And yet, you know, Steve Smith really is, it's his uh, process of maturation in order to become a good quarterback in the uh, Big Ten. Last week, he took them downfield, scored a touchdown against Illinois, and that kind of experience is very valuable in the years to come. Short of a first down, third and a half a yard, perhaps. Ball is at the Michigan 48-yard line. Gerald Ingram goes after the first down, and look at the pile is still moving. Boy, I think he got it. That looked like some of the old piles that Jimmy Brown used to do. Run yeah. after the pile, and the pile keeps moving. It had about seven guys. It almost looked like a scrum from rugby. <laughs> First down, that's what it is. Michigan at their own 49-yard line. 11-16 left on the clock. And the Michigan starters, some of them, on the sideline resting. 
Kenny Gear and Fred Brockington are the receivers. Wolfolk and Ingram in the backfield behind Steve Smith. Back to throw. Intercepted, no, knocked down by Craig Walls, who had arms all over it. Penalty flag is down in the defensive backfield also. Could be some interference back there. That's the kind of experience we talk about Steve Smith needs. And the fact that in high school, he could throw it through linebackers. He had that powerful an arm, and the linebackers in his high school days, when he played in Grand Blank, weren't that a proficient. You can't do that in college. He tried there and almost paid the price. And this is a good pair of linebackers to learn passing against. Craig Walls, Marlon Evans, Terry Talon. Personal foul is the call. It's against Indiana. And there's a 15-yard gain anyway on an incomplete pass. First down by penalty two as the ball is moved to the Indiana 36-yard line. Lilja is still the center. He didn't have much relief help at that position anymore. He just has to go the distance in these games. Wolfolk breaking outside, cutting back inside. Got a little yardage before Kenley wrapped him up. You know, you just talked about Lilja not having much help in the offensive line. His backup is a starting guard, <laughs> Kurt Becker. So uh, you see that Michigan has been hurt in the offensive line and really hurt in the depth department, not necessarily in their starting uh, starting line. But then offensive line's an easy position. Oh, are you going to get in trouble for that? Smith got all the time in the world, and he finds Dunaway at the 20-yard line. Dunaway collides with Jeff Gedman. Out of bounds, Michigan first down. It's kind of a coast up there at center. You just hand the ball to the quarterback and wait and see what happens. Watch the center and see what happens. <laughs> you call that easy. Tell me that's easy. Go ahead. Steve Smith gets great protection, allows the tight end to come all the way across the formation underneath the linebackers. Smith delivers it beautifully, and you you play center for a while, and, you, and then you tell me it's easy. Need I say, Jim Brandsetter was an offensive lineman. Fumble, a snap from center. Yeah, it's on the ground, and Michigan has recovered. Picking it up, John Powers. Another offensive lineman. Ah, it's an easy job. Don't have to worry about things. Here we see two classic examples. The most important exchange is not the handoff from the quarterback to the tailback. I'm glad you did that, Jim. I but rather the quarterback to the quarter or the quarterback to the center. Just wanted our audience to know that you're already prejudiced in your color cast. Absolutely. Second My guys up front, we got to take care of. Them. Second and ten. Little option. Smith picking his way through the Hoosiers. Turns around. Fights to the ten yard line. Chuck Alexander is the man who grabbed Smith around the ankles, but there was a nifty little nine-yard gain by Steve Smith. Well, he's an option quarterback. Bo likes the way he runs the option. He'll come down the line of scrimmage. He'll see the pitch back is taken. He'll cut it back up inside, then turns it outside and shows real good running ability. Finally, it's brought down, but, boy, he doesn't go down hard. He's twisting, squirming, trying to get as much as he can. Third down and one at the 10 of Indiana, Wolfo jumps outside, gets around Jimmy Hunter, pulls his way for the first down as Mike Pendleton hauls him down, an arm tackle, but that's at the five, just inside the five yard line, it'll be first down for Michigan, first and goal. Again, Wolfo showing his strength as he was met at the line of scrimmage and still turned it into a game. Well, strength and speed, the speed is here to get him outside, now here comes the strength, lower the shoulder, keep the legs driving and just run through the tackle down to the four. First and goal, Steve Smith once again marching the Michigan offense down the field, just as he did last week against Illinois. Wolfolk straight ahead, no room this time. Kenny Ball broke through the Michigan line, made the tackle in the backfield, although Wolfolk got it to the line of scrimmage. 8.51 left to play in the game. Michigan well in control and about to put more points on the board unless they make a mistake. Ricks comes in. Wolfolk comes out. 
Michigan backfield. Ingram and Ricks are behind Steve Smith. Boy, there are some big, powerful runners. A pair of tight ends in. They run the option. Smith cuts it back inside to the one-yard line. The Walls is there, as he has been all afternoon. Craig Walls, number 60, the linebacker who will lead this team in tackles. This is one of the beauties of running the option on the goal line. You force the defense to cover two people that can carry it after, you know, the play has developed. So, you know, you got to get two or three, four people to the football, to the point of attack. If you don't, there's a pitch back open or the quarterback turns it upfield. That's why it's a, a good play to run on the goal line. Third down from the one. Two shots at a touchdown for Michigan. And their freshman quarterback, Steve Smith. Ingram dives but does not get it. Craig Walls diving from the other side, and Jeff Gedman, number 25, and 38, that's Jimmy Hunter, their fine defensive end. He's been injured, got back in time for this game, number 38. So it's fourth down and goal from the one-yard line. This is not the time for a field goal. Well, you know... But from your offense, this is the time to buckle down and convert Absolutely. this opportunity. And you're in a can't-win situation. You're ahead 35 nothing. You're on the one. It's fourth down. You kick. You're pouring it on. You run. You're pouring it on. Seven minutes to play. Fourth down. Pitch. Lawrence Ricks knocked down. Uh, Chuck Alexander broke through on the corner and stopped Lawrence Ricks back of the six-yard line. A big defensive play by the senior from Mishawaka. Well, they smelled out the power sweep. Now watch how many people are out here. Lawrence Ricks doesn't have a chance. Here's the blitzer. He actually knocks him down. But if Ricks gets by him, there are about five other Hoosiers out there looking to make the hit. On the next series of downs, Indiana was forced to punt. So we move ahead to action later in the quarter. Second down and 22 at the 40-yard line of Michigan. Hewlett getting an opportunity to run this team. He's going to throw if he can get away with it. Under pressure, Hewlett rolls out, finds his man at the 35-yard line, Kenny Gear. Complete. That should be first down. That's just a great play by Rich Hewlett. Uh, he, he's, he's in trouble. He's forced out of the pocket by the rush, gets away from the rush, is running to his left, throws across his body, which is the most difficult throw a right-handed quarterback can make, nails it on the sideline uh, to Kenny Gear. And it's first down, 4.15 left to play. Hewlett on the option. Good pitch to Smith. Kerry Smith flipped at the 25-yard line. Loose ball. Going to stay in Michigan's possession. Kerry Smith out of Grand Rapids showing good speed, but that, of course, was set up because of the timely pitch by Hewlett. That's exactly what you see when Michigan has Hewlett or Smith in there. There's a lot of option football. With Wangler, you see a lot of pitches and handoffs. But when you've got Hewlett or Smith in there, both of them will run down the line of scrimmage and pitch that ball out. First down, Indiana 25-yard line. Rockington split to the top of your screen. Hassel, Hassel fumbles the ball, and Indiana recovers at its own 15-yard line. Vince Bean was the receiver to the uh, wide side of the field. Well, now watch number 83, Milt Carthens. He's blocking downfield. The ball pops out. Now Carthens goes on and tries to block the safety, and the ball is right behind him. And Indiana jumps on him. Doing exactly what he should do. Absolutely. He just doesn't know the ball's on the ground. But if he turned around and looked, it would have been there. Timeout Indiana with 340 left to play. Michigan leading 35-0. First and 10, Indiana at the 15-yard line. And Huck pitches back to his tailback. And I got to look for that one. Loose ball, fumbled. It's down. Indiana covers it, but they're going to lose some yardage in the process. Kevin Burke, the tailback, fumbled the ball when hit at the 15-yard line, and they're marking it at the 12. There are a lot of depth people in there, or second stringers, let's call them. But I'll tell you, they do not want for hitting. They are in there knocking people around. That is James Herman, 94, that causes the fumble. Lott comes over there, 
tries to get on it. Indiana managed to get on it, but they lost five in the process. Second down and 15. They change backs again. Al Daring is the tailback, and he bounces forward to about the 18-yard line. Herman in on the tackle, along with Mike Boren. It is scramble to the depth chart time. It is also two and a half minutes left to play. Scramble to the depth chart time. Never heard that one before. Third down and nine. Hoosiers at their own 18-yard line. Burke, the tailback, has the feet knocked out from underneath him. Jeff Reeves comes up to do that job. And it's short of a first down. The Hoosiers will have to punt it away with two minutes left to play in this game. Brian Carpenter goes deep. And Weir will do the punting again. It has been Geisler up until they wanted a shorter punt that Weir managed to drop at the eight-yard line. Didn't foil Michigan, however. They just went right down the field and scored. 11, back to punt, Dave Weir. Using up most of this of the third quarter. And Weir is back to try another punt. This one is high and short. Fair catch called for. 46-yard line of Michigan. Let's pick up the action later in the quarter with Michigan in possession. It is third down and 21. So this drive is moving backwards, but the clock is down to 20 seconds as Hewlett goes to throw. Got his man. Banged out of bounds. 83, Milt Carthens, fellow we saw earlier out there doing a blocking job on the safety with a ball on the ground behind him. On the clock, 12 seconds. On the scoreboard, 35 points for the Wolverines, none for the Hoosiers. Fourth down and four, and the clock is ticking, and I don't think they'll have to punt this one away at all. I think the clock will, no, the clock will not. With three seconds to go, timeout called by Indiana. The referees ruled that he was down in bounds, although it was obvious that he went out of bounds in order to keep the clock rolling and get the game over, because basically it's over. Then the clock rolls, it gets down to three, and Indiana calls timeout. You, I, I don't think you can get 35 points in three seconds. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think you can get 35 in nine seconds either. Well, that's all that remains. Three seconds on the clock. Don Bracken will punt it away, and that should use up the time. Bracken to punt it away on what should be the final play of the game. He hits one, cross field, goes out of bounds. But the clock has run out. Time has expired, and this game is over. Be sure to join us next week as the Michigan Wolverines travel to Madison, Wisconsin to take on the Wisconsin Badgers. Once again, the final score here today, Michigan 35, Indiana nothing. The executive producer of On TV Sports is Rocky Flinterman. Today's game was produced by Chuck Wazala. Our associate producer, John Tuey. This has been a sports presentation of National Subscription Television.